Good morning, hope you are doing well. I'm Daniel from uh, King's Cross Church in Hexthorpe. This morning I want to talk uh, a bit further about love. I did a, a talk a couple of weeks ago on this subject. If you haven't seen it, feel free to check it out on our YouTube channel. Um, so this morning I just, I'm going to read from one, probably one of the most famous passages of Scripture um, in 1 Corinthians 13. And we're just going to have a, a bit of a think about some of the characteristics of love which Paul talks about in this um, passage. So I'll just I'll just read that from 1 Corinthians 13, not all of it, just um, a few verses. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. So in those verses there, in verses 4 through 7, Paul describes 15 characteristics of what love is or is not. These are representative of God's love which are, we are called to imitate. This isn't easy and can often go against our natural inclina inclinations. We need to pray for God's help really in, in these uh, areas. We, 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 the, the particular things we find hardest as we go through them, perhaps you can think about some of the things which you need to pray for God's help in. So, what are the key, some of the key aspects of love that will help us in our relationship with other people and to radiate God's love and blessing? Well, first of all, there's um, patience, bearing with others when they have wronged us, not being quick to anger or desire Desiring that, and desiring that people, that person may repent. Showing patience can facilitate this to help to help other people to to repent and, and to see the wrongs that they've done against us. Sometimes it's also the same kind of patience that God has in not wishing that we should suffer for our sins and kindness as well, will, a willingness and desire to do good to others whenever it's in our power to do so. God's kindness was revealed in sending his Saviour Jesus to us. Let us seek and understand for ourselves the kindness and patience of God, which is meant to lead us to repentance. Patience and kindness are not self-seeking as desiring our own way first. Love your neighbour as yourself, for instance. And we're not to be self-seeking, meaning we are willing to seek the good of others, sometimes even at self-expense, as our Saviour did for us. And not envying, not jealous or grieved at the good of others, whether their gifts, honour or success. Envy leads to hatred and anger and is a root of many sins against our neighbour. It undermines both patience and kindness and will also hinder our prayers, according to James. Not boasting or being proud, not being puffed up in self-importance or thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, not being a show-off and wanting to be the centre of attention. Doing so will inevitably make us think of ourselves better than others and will lead us to arrogance and not thinking twice of putting others down. Not delighting in evil, in holding negative opinions of others, if we, if we love we will dislike, even hate evil, lies and sin, anything which is opposed to the way of love, truth and goodness. It doesn't delight in the suffering of others, doing wrong to them, or in sinning against God. But love rejoices with the truth. It's not enough how, just to hate evil, but we are to rejoice with the truth, integrity, and when, well, when tr truth, integrity, justice and the like prevail, when people and communities flourish in mutual goodness and trust. Even more, it is a necessary joy in the prospering of the gospel, 
the truth revealed to us in Jesus Christ and the salvation of others, just as God and heaven rejoice over his repentant sinners, the parable of a lost sheep, for instance. Love always protects, or we could say covers all things, which is the protection of another's name and honour, not wanting to put them to shame if there are wrongs or bad rumours, where necessary, not putting, not making them publicly known. To walk in the way of love, because love covers over a multitude of sins, being quick to forgive, just as the Lord forgave, forgives our sins. Not easily angered or irritable, as in having a sharp temper and being easily provoked. Do not let the sun go down whilst you are still angry, Paul says in Ephesians 4. Situations can make us angry and irritable, but walking in love will help us. Love won't be angry without reason and won't exceed a reasonable measure in degree or duration. Love would rather be at peace than to hold resentment. Love always trusts, or we could say believes all things. And by this is meant, which is uh, not to be, it's, it's love which is not to go against wisdom and facts. It's not just simply believing anything. Love always hopes and believes the best of others when there is still reason to do so. If it's unclear if someone has done wrong or what that, their motives are, love will always be willing to hope and believe the best in them and not jump to conclusions about a person or their motives. It won't seek out flaws in others, but rather will hope that when a bad opinion cannot be helped, that the person will change for the better by God's grace. Love always perseveres, enjoying with patience and kindness with others, not indulging in anger, resentment or revenge. Even when others cause us much grief, pain and suffering, having the firmness and power of God's love in our heart, knowing his love for us and desiring that same love for others, will enable us to endure all wrongs. We can entrust ourselves to God and his justice, knowing he will set all things right, and praying for those who wrong us, doing good to them as God has done to us. And again, Jesus is our example, isn't he, there, of a great person, one who perseveres in, in this great suffering and, and, and uh, evil for, for the good of others. So faith and hope in God, Paul also talks about the importance of faith and hope. And uh, these are very important to have faith and hope you know, in God and his promises in this life, it is it is our only real security, because as this pandemic has shown, nothing in this world is certain. But God is certain, and He is completely dependable. And Paul envisions as, as well in this passage, uh, particularly if you in verse ten, at a time when the completeness of God's kingdom will come. It is only through faith in Christ that we can enter into this certain hope of glory. The, love, the life of a new age of God's kingdom on earth. It will not just be a continuation of the present. Many things will pass away, e even sin and death themselves. And in the age to come, faith and hope in God will be fully realised. And as God's people will be perfected in love, which binds all virtues, all other virtues together in perfect unity, in, as Paul says in Colossians 3. Let us therefore walk in faith, hope, and love as people of the, the new age of God's kingdom in the present. And what a joy and blessing for ourselves and for others if we walk in this love. By doing so, we will follow in the steps of Christ. Stephen Clark talked to us about in John 13 the other week. So those are just a few thoughts on that passage and about love. And we just I do pray love that it would help each of us as we go into uh, these coming Christmas period to really enter into your love in a, in a new way as your people and among those we know and that we would really encounter that love and blessing ourselves and that we would show that it's not just a love among human relationships but it's a love which intrinsically has its fullness and uh, displayed and shown in Jesus Christ that we may know that the love of God which is true to penetrate our hearts in every way. Amen. So thank you for listening and hope you are, have a good rest of the day.